Hello, this is the American Medical Association's COVID-19 update. Today, we have our weekly look at the numbers, trends, and latest news about COVID-19 with AMA's Director of Science, Medicine, and Public Health, Andrea Garcia in Chicago. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer, also in Chicago. Uh, Andrea, a lot has happened over the past week. Big update from the CDC around mask guidance. Can you give us a quick recap of the change? Yeah, so thanks for having me, Todd. And, and last week, we were sort of anticipating what this change would be, and we were expecting an, an update from CDC. And, and what we heard last week is they're shifting their guidance for vaccinated individuals to call on them to, again, wear masks in public indoor settings, especially in those areas of the county where we're seeing high or substantial levels of community transmission of COVID. You know, Andrea, a lot of the headlines that you see out there say something to the effect of, the CDC reversing their earlier decision, but that's not really a fair take on this. I mean, there's a reason they changed the guidance, right? Right, and I think CDC had said that when they announced their guidance a few months ago, that as we get new information, we can expect the guidance will shift. And that is, is really what we are seeing here is the CDC has new information based on a, an outbreak in Massachusetts, and that new information is resulting in a shift in the guidance. And so there's some pretty specific guidance uh, on the masking part about who you know needs to start wearing a mask indoors. What's the uh, the way that that is determined at this point? Yeah. So this the CDC website specific specifically the CDC COVID data tracker has a county level map where people can see the transmission level in their area. So if you fall into one of those red or orange categories, those are areas of known concern, and that is where a CDC is recommending that individuals mask up in indoor public settings. Uh, we know that over two thirds of the country are currently in within those areas and we're seeing substantial transmission in all 50 states. So people should continue to watch that map, which I understand is updated daily um, and, and, and see if their area falls into one of, of those areas. And if it isn't now, it certainly could, could be soon given what we're seeing. Wow, that statistic that you gave that over two thirds of U.S. counties have higher or substantial transmission, that's pretty startling given where we were uh, just a uh, short time ago. Um, you know, are there any times when fully vaccinated people are advised to wear masks, even in areas where the transmission isn't high? Certainly. And, and I think, you know, it, it depends on your your individual risk as well. Um, you know, we certainly you don't have to wait until your area is one of, in one of those categories to, to mask up if you want to take extra steps to protect yourself. But what the CDC is saying is, you know, fully vaccinated people could wear a mask regardless of transmission, especially if you're immunocompromised, you're at increased risk, risk for severe disease, or if someone in your household is at increased risk for severe disease. And of, of course, if you have kids who are not yet eligible to be fully vaccinated. I think the other big piece of news that came out from CDC is they're recommending universal indoor masking for everyone in schools, regardless of vaccination status and local transmission rates. And, and this really brings the CDC guidance in line with the recommendations of the American Academy of Pediatrics. So there's a lot of news, a lot of guidance in this, this latest announcement. One of the pieces that may not have gotten as much attention uh, is in regard to testing. Um, can you talk about that change in guidance? Yeah, so the CDC is, is now recommended that, recommending that fully vaccinated people who have a known exposure to someone with suspected or confirmed COVID to be tested three to five days after their exposure. Uh, and that you continue to wear a mask in public indoor settings for 14 days or until you receive a negative test result. And, and this is a change because before what the guidance said is, is that fully vaccinated people did not need to be tested in the case of known exposure unless they became symptomatic. And so why uh, would a vaccinated person have to get tested then? Yeah, now that we know vaccinated people have a high enough viral load to transmit the virus to others, that that testing change makes sense because they can they can be a person who's transmitting the virus. So that that's why we see that change in testing. It's no, another set of words that most uh, average people thought they would never be talking about viral load, but uh, that leads us to the next question, which is about the data that led to these changes. 
uh, that was reported uh, in, a, uh, in a report by the CDC on Friday. Can you talk about some of the specifics from that report? Yeah, so they published in their MMWR uh, some of the information about the outbreak in Provincetown, Massachusetts. And, you know, the takeaways there were that the Delta variant is more transmissible than what we originally suspected it would be. But that also that immunized people who have a breakthrough infection can spread that, that virus to others. Uh, so we heard Dr. Walensky explain that these high viral loads suggest an in increased risk of transmission among vaccinated people with the Delta variant. And this, this is concerning and it's a pivotal discovery. And that, like we talked about earlier, that's what is leading to this new updated mask recommendation. If the vaccinated people can carry high enough virus to transmit it, they can contribute to increases in new infections. Although we think this is probably to a far lesser extent than unvac unvaccinated people are at this point. Well, it's interesting because, you know, obviously breakthrough infections among vaccinated people were always expected, you know, with the effectiveness of the vaccines are. But I think, you know, the big change here is the Delta variant, right? That's right. I mean, with the Alpha variant, we weren't seeing this uh, ability of, of vaccinated individuals to transmit the virus to others. And that is really what has changed and what has led to the updated guidance. As contagious as chickenpox, I think that was the uh, the words that came out uh, about that, which is very contagious. It's really changed the game and thus the guidance changes. Well, uh, obviously, vaccines remain uh, the key to getting this under control. And, you know, what are the implications that you're seeing out there uh, in terms of vaccines? Anything else? Yeah, I would just say, you know, the, the vaccines are our, our number one public health intervention here. That's our our primary tool we have against the virus. We're still seeing 97% of hosp those hospitalized with COVID-19 are those who are unvaccinated. Um, and like we talked about, that transmission is still occurring mostly among the unvaccinated, and that is who remains most at risk. Um, so, so really, we, we need to pick up the pace uh, of vaccinations to decrease the number of people who are susceptible to severe illness. It's pretty shocking when you think about the head start that we had here in the U.S. in terms of the pace of vaccination to see uh, that vaccination in the European Union has uh, exceeded the U.S. for the first time. That's uh, a big change. Uh, so, you know, when we think about all of this news that's coming out, uh, has have we seen any changes uh, with vaccinate, uh, vaccination efforts nationally? We are seeing some increases. So providers are now administering about 673,000 doses per day on average. That's an increase. We had been hovering around that 530,000 per day mark. Obviously this is, is still well below the peak in April. CDC is reporting about 191.8 million people as having received at least one dose of the vaccine. So that's 57.8% of the population and 164.9 million or 49.7% who are fully vaccinated. I think the good news is we finally reached that 70% mark on Monday of adults over 18 who received at least one dose of the vaccine. It's about a month later than we'd hoped for, but it's, it's good to finally reach, reach that goal. And a second about uh, immunization managers and just I think our closing was, you know, 192 million people have gotten at least one dose and you know, hitting that 70% mark, you know, about a month uh, later than hoped. That's, those are big numbers, but still a long way to go, uh, given the Delta variant uh, and the impact that it's having right now. Um, you mentioned uh, that uh, last week we were seeing a slight uptick in vaccination in some of the hardest hit areas. Um, you know, Florida, for instance, uh, you know, big news there this week. Are we seeing that trend continuing? Yeah, so that, that trend is continuing. Vaccines are rising in those states that are experiencing, the, experiencing those surges of the Delta variant. So for the con third consecutive week, states with the highest number of COVID cases have had the highest vaccination rates. So Mississippi, that seven day average of those who've received the first dose has more than tripled in a month. That same pattern can be seen in Louisiana where that seven day average of the first dose has almost quadrupled. And in Missouri, that number of first doses has almost doubled over a month. So this gives us some hope, but I think overall, these jurisdictions are still lagging behind the rest of the country. 
um, and their overall rates remain low. But I, I think it is promising to see these numbers increasing. How are we actually doing when you're looking at a specific number of cases uh, this week? Yeah, so this week we surpassed 35 million confirmed COVID cases. We're at 35 million, 135,404 reported cases of COVID. And there are 613,769 reported deaths. So we know the Delta variant is now responsible for almost all new COVID cases in the country. And the seven day average of cases is, is up. 64% compared to last week. So we're at 66,606 cases for the week that ended on Friday. You know, when we were talking a minute ago about kind of state by state, one thing I didn't hear uh, from you is about Florida. And uh, can you tell us what uh, what's happening there? Yeah, so Florida continues to be really a, a hotspot for, for COVID transmission. They reported 21,000 683 new cases on Friday alone. That is the highest one day total since the start of the pandemic. And on Sunday, they broke the previous record for current hospitalizations, reporting about 10,000 people hospitalized with confirmed COVID cases. And that previous record was from more than a year ago. So there, Florida is really leading the nation in per capita hospitalizations for COVID. Their health systems are reaching a point of being overwhelmed. We're hearing that the, the cases there are younger and younger, and they're starting to have to put emergency room visitors in, in hospital beds and hallways. Um, and at the same time, we're seeing the governor resisting mask mandates there. And we saw the executive order signed on Friday, which said, you know, parents have the power to decide for themselves whether or not their children wear masks in schools this fall. So obviously, that's counter to what the recommendations of of the CDC and the AAP are at this point. Mm -hmm. Hard to understand given, uh, again, another astounding number, 20, almost 22,000 new cases on one day, the highest since the pandemic started. Uh, uh, that is definitely not the direction we're, we're hoping to see here. Uh, in terms of kind of heading that off, um, one of the things we are seeing are more employers asking for proof of vaccination. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah, I, I think, you know, part of that is we saw the Department of Justice release a memo which said that there is no federal law that prohibits mandates for these vaccines while they're under an EUA. Um, and so we're starting to see more um, employers move in that direction. You know, certainly it's, it's notable that President Biden announced that there would be really a two tier system for our, our federal employees, the four million federal employees. So those who don't get vaccinated will have to social distance, they'll have to be tested regularly, they'll have to wear face coverings, and they also will face limits on official travel. So that really stops short of a mandate because you, you have a choice between masking um, or, or you know, taking these other uh, public health preventive, preventive measures. Um, but we're seeing more move in this direction and, and certainly Google and Facebook, for example, recent, recently announced that they would be mandating vaccinations for U.S. employees before they return to the office. Um, so we're hoping that we'll see um, other employees, players move in this direction as well. Of course, we saw last week a group of healthcare organizations, including the AMA, uh, supporting uh, uh, mandates for healthcare workers, seeing lots of uh, activity among universities, colleges, the uh, Indiana University uh, mandate just upheld as well. So lots uh, developing there. Uh, in terms of other messages, anything else from the AMA that we uh, should let folks know about this week? Yeah, I would just note that the AMA released a statement in support of the CDC's updated mask guidance, noting that with continued uh, increasing spread of COVID in the U.S., um, the number of people who remain unvaccinated, uh, that this updated guidance for vaccinated individuals is really needed to help curb the spread of COVID, particularly the Delta variant, and that wearing a mask is really a small but important measure that we can take to help us all stay safer. Um, and then, of course, we continue to strongly encourage everyone who is eligible for a COVID-19 vaccine to get vaccinated as soon as possible. If you have questions or concerns, speak with your physician and review trusted resources, including getvaccineanswers.org. Absolutely. And I think you hit on the important thing as uh, we're hearing more and more uh, talk to your physician, get vaccinated. Well, that wraps up today's COVID-19 update. Thanks again, Andrea, for being here. 
uh, keeping us informed on the latest numbers and trends. We'll be back soon with another COVID-19 update. For resources on COVID-19, visit ama-assn.org slash COVID-19. Thanks for joining us today, and please take care.